Hi everybody, how's it going today? Happy February 1st. We're going to talk about Bitcoin very quickly. So if you guys enjoy these videos, I would really appreciate an upvote on Steemit. We Steam it as well if you guys feel that it's awesome. And make sure you also like, subscribe, and share the material on YouTube and on Twitter as well. And if you guys especially would like to let me know I'm doing a great job, you are welcome to donate to the Luna and Philicon cryptocurrency piggy bank as well. So we're going to go over very quickly, first of all, what happened in my very quick blog here that I will pull up. All right. I mentioned before, how much longer can the bulls defend? Right? I'm bearish biased and believe we will test the support range in the short term. Now, these were my support ranges, folks. All right. And um, yeah, we were we were ranging right between right here. And I kid you not that right after I posted this, um, you know, I'm not saying I had any influence on it. It was just really good timing, right? We broke from here, 10,100 to literally 9,400 ranges in maybe an hour or two about, right? And I was also referencing the shorts versus the longs as well. Now, what we got to make note of is, first of all, the Bitcoin shorts and the Bitcoin longs, okay? The Bitcoin shorts right now, in the past 30 minutes, it's actually um, it's actually a little bit oversold, you can say. It's now gone down to, um, sorry, yeah, oversold around 23.4k there. Now, I'm going to go take a look at Bitcoin longs. So, we're talking about 23 0.4k there and now the longs are actually increasing now right the longs are actually increasing so what this actually means and we need to really understand this okay what this means is that the shorts are not only closing okay like they're not just um they're not just closing their positions but people are actually buying as well right now okay so people are actually entering long positions. Before, Bitcoin longs were only ahead by about 1,000 Bitcoins. Now we're ahead about by about two, 3,000. So that is a good sign as well that the market is starting to rush in around the $9,000 level, okay? I'm going to pull up my Bitfinex here as well, and I'm going to show you guys some of the order books here as well. I'll just have it up in a few minutes there. But first of all, I would like to talk about the volume, okay? I'm going to go to the volume and we're going to take a look at coin market cap right now. And what we notice right now is that the volume is really picking up, right? The volume is absolutely picking up today and that makes me very happy relative and compared to the previous days. For example, on January 29, 7 billion. Yesterday was only 8 billion. Today we're at about 8.7 billion. And the day before today, or yesterday I meant, is 8.6 billion. So the last time we've had this kind of volume was about five days ago. So this is also a very good sign that the market is starting to get very interested around this price level. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to hold, right? Now, don't take it the wrong way whatsoever. Now, I'm going to do a quick analysis like here as well for you folks, just by drawing out these supports and resistances right here. Now, this right here is a very good zone for us to consider it as a support, right? But clearly, guys, it didn't hold at all. We're now in the 9K range. So despite the volume picking up and despite the longs picking up as well, we do have to acknowledge the fact that the bears are still going to be in control, okay? Now, before, when I was talking about how much longer I gotta take off my winter jacket. I apologize, I just came outside. It's really cold outside today. I'm just getting a quick sweater on here that I have. All right, so so we need to know, acknowledge this, that before the bulls were not even attempting to make an attack, right? They weren't even attempting to buy to go long. And instead, the bears just kept pounding at this support. And they kept pounding at this support. And they kept pounding at this support right here. And now, I kept asking, how long can these bears keep pounding at the support until a very relative support is actually broken? Because the bulls are not even attempting to make a long attempt to defend, right? Or sorry, to attack. They're just defending. So, of course, they're going to lose eventually. Now, I love the battles between the bulls and the bears. It gives us a really good indication of where the market uh, sentiment lies. And that's a very important gauge for us to have. So the way I see it now is because the longs are actually starting to pick up. It means that the bulls are starting to fight back. 
And that is so key to make note of right here, that the volume in the past few hours is not only volume of, of people selling and going short, right? But it's also the bulls are buying. I do see. I mean, I saw earlier these, like, it's gone now. I can't show you it. But I saw this massive wall, a hidden wall as well, okay? Whenever we see a hidden wall, it actually shows that a big group of people are coming in and they're collaborating, they're working collectively to stack at a very specific point, okay? And when they stack at a very specific point, that usually means that there's interest. Now let me show you where the next one is, right there. Do you see this right here? 15, 8, 89, 85, okay? I always make note of these kind of things and people should as well. Now we ask ourselves, this one here says only 1.2, okay? And I'm actually just gonna freeze the screen there with snippet so we can actually see it, okay? That looks a lot better, right? I'm sorry if it's blurry like this, okay? I'm actually just gonna do this just to make it easier. Now, yeah, that's actually great. I can minimize this as well now. See this right here, the 15, right? And you see this right here, you ask yourselves, why is there only literally 1.2 amount in this row right here? In this row right here, okay? So this column right here is the total, the cumul cumulative amount. And this right here is just the individual line at this specific price at 89.85. So I ask myself, why would there be 15 random people that's only stacking a total of 1.2 Bitcoin there? And the answer is simple. It's because it's a hidden order in the book, okay? They don't actually want to reveal their actual size. Because if they reveal their actual size, then this right here will look very different. Imagine if this part was green, okay? This part right here, that shows the wave. Think of, um, think of this as walls. Now the bigger side, right, this side right here, would like to devour this side like that, okay? That, that's the idea of how a wall works. Now, because we don't see here, it doesn't actually give us a real representation of what this wall actually looks like. But I have seen so many of these walls of people collectively stacking. Now, at the $9,000 range, it was probably about... I'm guessing about a hundred million dollars that was actually stacked there that I was counting. Now, as people try to hammer at these support ranges, the amount doesn't actually change because these guys have all agreed, hey, we're going to put it as a hidden order. And once we do it as a hidden order here, nobody could see our wall and nobody could see our, our amount. Nobody will even know. So these people that are placing these hidden, hidden orders, they actually do have intentions to actually go long, right? That is a really, really important thing to distinguish here. And we have not seen this in a very long time where these walls are actually starting to stack up and buyers are coming in. So yes, there is an 8K scenario. Yes, there is a 9K scenario. Yes, there is a seven, you know, high 7K scenario as well. But right now, as it stands, we need to acknowledge the most important thing to me right now, okay? is that according to this trend line that I drew like this pretty much, right? We've broken out of this one already, right? 100%, we can all agree that this was actually broken already. I apologize if I seem a little bit tired. I um, I only slept about three hours last night because I kept waking in and out to these alerts. I, I love it though, like don't get me wrong guys, okay? Don't worry about, don't worry about myself in terms of uh, you know, doing this too much or anything like that. You guys have to respect the fact that this is my choice. I appreciate all the kind comments that I should get out more, etc. But guys, I'm just joking around most of the time as well. Like, of course, I get out here and there, right? I don't get out a lot by choice, but of course, I do balance my lifestyle as well. And I understand all the health implications with working from home. And I've taken all the necessary precautions to prevent things like, uh, you know, like, like physical issues from being home too much as well. For example, like, you know, arthritis etc. I make sure I have a really good chair, really good setup, etc. I make sure I balance a very good social life as well with, you know, my family especially, right? Not necessarily friends, but with, with family, that's really important. So I appreciate you guys saying that I need to get on stuff more, but, you know, also respect the fact that this is my choice as well, right? So anyways, I just want to bring that up, like how I always address uh, some small things that are brought up, right? 
So, and I hope you guys are enjoying my sense of humor there in, um, in all these little videos that I'm making on Twitter as well. Um, the people have said I do have a fantastic voice, right, for singing. And uh, my mom's always told me I should probably try out for a Canadian Idol. So I figured, hey, why not just test out the Twitter scene first and see how they like that by singing R. Kelly or, or Celine Dion or something like that. So and I, th I find it pretty funny to relate it to cryptocurrency as well, right? Okay, anyways, so what we're seeing here right now is this, 200 moving average. Guys, we're about to bounce off of the 200 moving average, right? Historically, when's the last time we fell below the 200 moving average? Uh, never, I think. Okay, like 2015, right? 2015 was when we actually fell below the 200 moving average. That's a really long historical trend, you can say. Now we ask ourselves, it's been about about two years and three months now, are we really going to fall below the historical 200 moving average? And the answer is maybe, by a wick, maybe not more than that, right? So I want to point out again that this is now vanished, guys. We had two key points, right? That's where this met up right here. That's why, as well, I was saying that this possible region could have been a support, right? You have to take a look at the volume, and that's how I've been correlating it. You have to take a look at this volume, like right around these kind of regions, right? Right here especially, take note of these wicks, right? And that volume. So it was very relevant for us to acknowledge this part right here as a support, right? Which unfortunately it broke down. So now because it broke down, it now becomes a, a support, or sorry, a resistance. What was previously a resistance becomes a support, and what was previously a support becomes a resistance. And we have to make note of that. Now we ask ourselves, where is the next most relevant point? Well, right now we're testing around this range. Would you guys agree with me? This particular range right now, which is 9K, right? And then the next relevant region would be right over here, right? Now this area is, is pretty good in my opinion. Regardless of where this ends up trending, I'm very happy actually because I've entered a I've entered a big short position. Just put it that way, right? I, I I made the call. I will definitely follow up with the positions that I'm making, and I will 100% take my own advice because I'm doing TA on it. So I hope that some of you guys have either entered a great position from the call, or you've also stayed very very cautious by staying out of the market. I really don't recommend shorting to anybody unless you're a much more experienced trader. It's not one of those things that you can just pick up right away because there's a large concept to understand behind it and how the profit is made and a very different market psychology as well when you're shorting the market, right? You're kind of taking advantage of everyone's fear. That's what shorting is because people are panically selling and it's now a short or medium term bear trend. So what we like to do is short the market for the experienced traders out there. And of course, as you guys know, shorting is my specialty. <laughs> and um, I always post that funny meme of mine, I don't care bear, right? So now we're here. We're here in a very relevant area, okay? Very relevant zone. And we ask ourselves, will this break? Will this break the 50, sorry, the 200 moving average? Now, all we got, all we can do, guys, is take a range. These wicks are really not implicative of support at all, okay? I'm talking about if I go body to body, right? For all we know, we might consider some of these bear trapped regions an overlapping wick, right? And it might even be like that for all we know. That could be considered a decent support. Maybe something like that. So we really don't know which trend line is resist uh, is a relevant slope. But what we can acknowledge is that these green boxes right here are very, very much so the support regions, okay? Now, I still stand by my prediction here, and I will show you guys it here as well. Um, unfortunately, I don't want to talk about a bear scenario. Like, don't get me wrong, okay, guys? I really don't want a bear scenario, despite how much I thrive in it. But we do have to consider all of these things, folks, okay? So right now, are we likely to bounce, okay? Let's ask ourselves this right now. Are we going to bounce or are we going to trend straight down to the 8K range, right? 
Now, regardless of if I predict a long-term trend or not, I, sorry, when I say long-term, I mean like in two, three days from now, or, you know, I, I don't, right? What's more important is that what is it doing right now? And that is something we need to figure out. So I'm just going to pull up my TA very quickly here first for, for you. And let's take a look at it. So that's not the right one. That is Verge. Let's go to, um, I believe, this one right here. So this is my relevant support, and I stand by it still until there's something that changes. So I do believe in a few days, before February 5th, 16 mainly, I can't seem to find it. Where is it? I think it was the first one. There we go. 79.15 to 84.25. That is still my target right around here. I'm going to move it up a little bit here That's to make it much more visible around the 8400 range. But I do believe 79 will be pretty much the lowest we will go, just based on a bunch of extrapolation as well. And we can just see it down ticking right now. We're already at 89.50, guys. I really think that we might bounce slightly, okay? I'll say this very clearly, that the 4-hour is starting to get very, very oversold. The 3-hour RSI is getting to be extremely oversold as well, okay? The 1-hour is getting very oversold. Everything is an extremely... Um, extreme extreme oversold conditions so we ask ourselves is it actually going to break completely out of the 8900 range and fall to my second short target or are we going to bounce slightly first and perhaps sideways and then later we end up trending down here now i don't think that the market has enough strength right now to go down i think that we've already exhausted all of our possible bearish strength okay Think of strength when you're going upwards, right? A bullish momentum. But there's also strength going down as well, the opposite. So we kind of have to reverse our mentality when it comes to RSI. Now, I firmly believe that people are getting too interested right now in this specific range. The volume is just too big right now. And it's just going to be a matter of time before... I mean, think about it, guys. We're at RSI support right now already, for example, on a 45-minute chart, okay? Right? And to me, the way that I see this, for example, on a even on a 45-minute chart, right? Eventually, this pattern wants to break, guys. Like this is, I see this as an ending fifth wave, whether it's an ending fifth wave of some sort or uh, like an uh, ending fifth wave diagonal or a channel. Nevertheless, I do see it as a fifth wave in there, and I do think it's going to break out. Now, on the daily chart, um, on the no, what well, no, that wasn't the four-hour chart. Here we go. Okay. We were talking about this yesterday with RSI. Now, I hope that you guys took something away from that. So I'll show you guys exactly. I'm just going to go to drawing, stay in drawing mode here. Here we go. So I hope that you guys really learned something drastic from that because this is one of my favorite ways to do an analysis. We're coming down, folks. And then the, what we're doing right here is actually this, right? We're doing one two this is the third one this is the fourth and that's basically the fifth and then we broke down guys this bearish flag on the daily call was all that we needed to see uh, not on the daily on the four hour chart was all we needed to see to acknowledge that it was going to break down and break down it did okay so i really hope that some of you guys got in on this amazing play I don't like to just um, throw out random things that don't make sense, right? What we try to do as a trader is focus on finding things that make sense, things that are rational, things that are logical. And when we find these similarities, whether it's in price action, in candles, or in our side in this case, if they make sense, then we have to prove these theories to see if that will actually come true or not, right? Think of yourself as scientists as well. You think of yourself as a scientist that's ready to conduct an experiment. Now, my theory was simple for the 4-hour chart, and I would be very happy to share it with you as well, okay? So my theory for this was that you would draw a support line on the bottom right here, like that, and the moment that we, we close below it, right, that's the moment we basically broke RSI support. And surely enough, right, people entered into a massive short position, the reason why we're getting a slight, slight slope here instead is because this acted as a support recently, and then we just broke right through it into, excuse me, their hiccup, right into the negative. So am I, am I thinking of an 8K, 8K scenario? Absolutely I am. 
but guys we we can we do another thousand dollars we have to ask ourselves another thousand dollars with this, this type of rsi already and the answer is most likely no okay what we'll notice most likely is this in my opinion that we will get to an rsi support somewhere up there okay we will eventually get close to some rsi support and i do believe that we're going to probably end up trending back up to maybe 9,500 or so, okay? 9,500, maybe even 10K, who knows? Maybe we'll actually end up testing these zones again. This one here was a rare, very relevant area as well. So this is why I say 9,500, all right? 9,500 is where I do believe it will actually go back up to. But I think we'll end up hitting about 8,800 first, maybe very low 8,900s. But in terms of shooting through the support, it's really not likely right now. We have to make sure that we test specific key regions first before we end up going a specific way, right? The bulls are trying to attack, as I've pointed out, with their short, with their long positions getting larger. The bulls are setting up these mysterious hidden walls where they are buying, right? And we are in extremely, extremely oversold conditions right now. And I think that a lot of technical traders will be rushing in. And that's going to be a good sign. And now another thing I wanted to point out on coin market cap that I forgot to actually was this: that the market is hemorrhaging right now. Okay, they are we are bleeding. A few days ago, the market cap was at about five hundred and sixty billion dollars. Okay, now I'm I'm not a lawyer in any way. All right, guys, I just want to show you guys. Um, like if you guys don't know what is going on, all right, I'm gonna tell you guys what's going on fundamentally in the world right now. This is what's going on. There's new tax laws and new regulations, new legislations that are being implemented right now, where it's it's causing investors to not want to invest in Bitcoin right now. Okay, and 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 I kid you not that I firmly believe fundamentally these are the main reasons why Bitcoin, other than you know all this fud going on. And, but it's mainly governments trying to control Bitcoin right now. Would you guys agree with me? It's governments stepping in, and that's what they're doing right now. Whether it's it's you know talking about banning, whether it's talking about regulating, um, in some form or another right now, it is because of all these this media and news that's just driving the market right now, and a lot of it is FUD, right? We also have to acknowledge a lot of the issues like uh, Bitfinex as well, Tether issue, the India issue that just came up as well, right? Um, so there's a lot of media that's just driving Bitcoin right now. But I do want to say this right now once again, that I've seen Bitcoin go up and down, and I've seen the resilience of Bitcoin, okay? Every time these major corporations, investment banks, uh, media outlets say things like, uh, Bitcoin is a bubble, uh, Bitcoin is going to fall to zero, Bitcoin is going to die. Every type of negativity that it's ever faced, every type of obstacle that it's ever come across, Bitcoin has been incredibly resilient because this is a brand new technology that will eventually have a major impact in the world. And I think it's a matter of time where, um, right now, it's a specific time where fear is in the marketplace. And do you guys know what we fear the most? We fear the unknown. What we don't know, we fear, right? And right now, guys, Bitcoin is, it's well above anybody's head. You know, I, I, I've i been focusing on Bitcoin for a while, but if someone were to ask me for a detailed explanation of what a blockchain really is, oh, geez, I could not explain in a heartbeat, nor would I even pretend that I knew, right? So the, there, there are people, you know what's, I'm not gonna pretend that I know about something that I don't know about, right? But you know what? You know what's worse than that? My microphone just died here. I think I'll be right back. Sorry about that. My microphone just died there, and I just had to put on the charger. So what I was saying is that Bitcoin is literally one of the most resilient technologies that we have seen, and we have to ask ourselves, what kind of person are we? Like, what kind of trader? What kind of investor are we? Right? And how much do we believe in this technology? Now, when in doubt, you need to stay in the sidelines. All right. When in doubt, stay on the sidelines because this is an incredibly scary market right now. And I'm not saying this to you folks as a financial investor. I'm talking about the truth right now, which is a lot of people lose money, even the best traders in the world. They lose money in, in bear markets, right? 
and myself, I've come to this conclusion a long time ago when I used to lose a lot of money in a bear market. And I just didn't really understand it like in my first, I don't know, three to six months of trading full time. Then I realized, hey, I'm just going to specialize when people fear in the market, right? When they extremely fear the market and I'm going to focus on shorting. <laughs> so I kind of developed a strategy around people's fear, right? Um, when they panic sell. Now, what we're noticing, guys, still is that buyers are rushing in. Look at this, okay? Like I mentioned, we're bouncing up right now. I do believe we're going to get to at least 10,500, possibly even back up to 10K. I know that sounds outrageous, but once you break through a key support, it now becomes a key resistance. And guys, we have just completely rejected right now so far, okay? Between this candle, like this candle is not bad so far, right? I mean, look at the volume. It's it's actually incredible. I'm going to go to a lower time frame right now. Look at the time frame. This volume is amazing. It's a really good candle right now that seems like it wants to reject it. The moving average is exponentially going up here. So guys, I want to talk about a year from now, okay? Let's talk about a hypothetical situation right now. If you guys were to buy every single coin on coin market cap in the top 20 right now okay right now if you guys were to buy every single coin on coin market cap right now do you guys think that a year from now that every coin would be bullish right that every coin would pretty much be up let's just think about this for a second do you guys think bitcoin will be higher than it is now ripple higher than it is now cardano higher than it is now right if you were to buy like a a thousand dollar position for each one of these coins do you think that you would be up a year from now 100 percent, you would be up on the majority of them right as traders we don't always win every single trade we try to focus on winning trades over time and that's how we profit with the win expectancy formula that we derive ourselves right which i will go over with you guys in a in, a, in another risk management video of mine but yeah, if we buy every coin right now, there's no doubt in my mind that we are going to have one of the most bullish markets in the history of mankind because of this un amazing technology that's disrupting the world literally right now. It's disrupting the world to the point where every government has to step in because they see the potential negatively and positively as well. And I agree 1000% right now with almost every country that that something needs to drastically happen for them to regulate this right now to have a more controlled market and the reason why bitcoin and crypto in general right now is so volatile is because it's a very new market these very new markets like think of the Think of any volatile stock that's brand new, right? After time where supply will meet demand and there's a good balance between the bulls and the bears, that's when things will settle down a little bit. But as for right now, in a brand new space, there's absolutely no precedent, guys. People who are using Bitcoin 2016, 2017 as history, what happened last year, right? What happened in, in 2015? We're going to use that as history. I think that that's, that's just completely bollocks right now, that people are going to compare a historical trend when Bitcoin was under like $1,000 to when Bitcoin reached $20,000. It just doesn't make sense to me, these analysts on, on TradingView, for example, that are looking at historical data. I mean, you need historical data from 5, 10 years back to be able to quantify and justify anything, right? To establish a historical trend in the market. Cryptocurrency is so young right now, guys, that it's literally impossible to predict. Anybody who thinks that they can predict Bitcoin right now or says, yep, it's going to go down to 2000 yep, it's going to go down to 20000 is pure guessing. My $30,000 guess is just based on a simple Fibonacci extension. And that's it. That's my $30,000 long-term guess. That's why I'm more so focusing on the short-term plays, looking specifically at price action, volume, and key support areas using trend lines. I feel that this is one of the best ways to evaluate it and analyze it right now. And Elliott Wave is doing okay, I guess. But Elliott Wave works a lot better when we're talking about impulse waves and near the beginning of ABC. But when, once we start to get into very complicated types of patterns, Elliott Wave, I just throw it out the window and I adopt a different type of strategy. 
So as traders, it's very important for us to change up our game and see opportunities in other types of strategies. As traders, we have to see ourselves as, as people with lots of different skills and weapons. You guys have a backpack full of skills, full of weapons, and you're going to pull out and use whichever one will suit the situation best. And the people that have an arsenal of these types of weapons are the people that will thrive and flourish the most, right? That's why trendline resistance is to me awesome. So I want to let you guys know right now what I'm planning to do. And I haven't shown anybody this yet as well, okay? So uh, I'm starting to accumulate, okay guys? I'm starting to accumulate right now. I'm cool with looking for some 200 to, you know, like 600% to 2000% coins, right? I'm slowly accumulating and I'm going to be very honest with you guys as well. XVG, TRX, SIA. Today, big whoop did he do? I do this math every single day pretty much to update my tracker. I'm looking at XVG, TRX, SIA, and look at the potential gains. We're talking 400, 500, 2500. I do a spreadsheet like this every single month, guys, and I usually don't share it. Like I shared my 2017 one that was fairly, um, like just for the public, basically, right? That I, I held the public record for. So, um, so yeah, so I will be looking to accumulate. I've now accumulated about $17,000 worth of XVG, TRX, and SIA. I'm actually down $2,000 for my position right now. But long term, guys, I plan to get this portfolio up to about, um, about a million to $2 million potential by the end of February or March. I'm going to be looking at a lot of hot coins and I will be sharing with you guys every single one of my picks. This is what I do full time. This is what I thrive on in very volatile markets. And everybody sees this right now as panic selling. And the reason why I was talking about, hey, if you buy all the top 20 coins right now, will it boom by 2019? And the majority of the answer will be yes, right? Your net, your net profit will highly exceed your, your, your loss, <laughs> basically. So this is, to me, is a time where I see it's going to be an amazing opportunity to add cheap coins that have amazing development, a very good team as well. Um, in my portfolio. Yes, guys, I don't usually invest. You guys know that already. I'm not usually a long-term holder, right? Last time I've actually held fairly large positions, other than Ethereum a few days ago, um, but more so a very short-term swing position was in in the October, November, if you guys remember, where I held Litecoin, I held Ethereum, I held Ripple, I held Omizi Go, I held NEO, I held IOTA a little bit, I held EOS as well. Now it's time for me to start shopping again. We have to think of it like this as well. Let me ask you guys a rhetorical question, okay? Do you really think that Bitcoin is actually going to tank to zero? Okay? Do you think that it will tank to literally zero dollars or something ridiculous like a thousand or two thousand? Do you think that blockchain technology will be eradicated from this world? Do you think that, that the governments will interfere and regulate it so much that end users like us who trade it, who invest in it, will actually have no potential anymore in the market to make money? Is this technology going away? No, it's the hottest controversial topic right now in the world because it has a lot of promise. Now, blockchain technology has a lot of promise and it also has a lot of fear. We need to understand the fear in it as well, right? Other than the unknown. There's a lot of, um, a lot of underground activity that the government's fear could occur, right? A lot of um, untraceable privacy coins, especially right now. So there's a lot of things for us to have to close the gap on and, and bridge the gap between a huge technology getting mainstream, making sure that people are going to be protected as well. So I think that this is a very good time for all of this to be happening right now. And do you guys think that the all-time high of 20K will actually never be reached again? Really? Hmm. Well, you have to decide now if you are bullish or buy or, or bearish. Now me, I'm I'm bullish to very bullish long term. I'd say more so bullish. Long term, we'll we'll probably end up changing my opinion once we end up getting a little steam. But I'm bullish, guys, because I'm an adopter of cryptocurrency and I'm happy that you guys are here in this space with me. We have to acknowledge the fact that we are here right now as incredibly early adopters still. Yeah, sure, early adopters were, you know, five, six, seven years ago in 2008, eight, nine. there. I think it was 2009, right? Yeah. Um, but we're not too late. You guys are not too late to the game that have come in, right? Think of all the people that will be coming in later. 
Sure, we got a lot of mainstream attention when it reached um, 18K, or sorry, 5K, 6K, 10K, even more. I mean, we shot up from 10K to 19K, guys, in like a month. With no, with, uh, it was, it's unprecedented. There's no history for this at all. Nothing in the world could even set a precedent or a history where we can track or correlate or compare this to. This is uncharted territory right now. And we have to acknowledge the fact that this is very healthy. So I know I'm adding a little bit of fundamentals in here as well with a little bit of philosophy from my perspective. And I need to let you guys know where I stand very firmly in blockchain technology and in crypto space in general, right? And like I said earlier, I'm not going to pretend to know something. That is, that's horrible. That's the most horrible thing you can ever do. I'm only going to stick to my guns and what I know. I think that the worst kind of people in crypto are the people that pretend that they know what they're talking about, right? And they'll just shoot off random facts. I hope that the majority of the facts that I said is true. I researched for about two hours before making this video because I actually wanted to present uh, factual information based on everything that's going on right now, right? So um, I'm not going to pretend that I know a lot more than I do know. I'm, I'm a technical analyst. I see amazing price action right now negatively, but we are also reaching the 200 moving average that we are actually bouncing off of right now. We have rejected, guys. We have rejected $400 since this video has been made in the beginning, guys. Look at this beautiful volume right now. I have not seen volume like this in a very long time right now with this size of a candle and this much conviction, okay? This is beautiful from what I see personally right now in this 30-minute candle. We haven't seen this kind of volume since yesterday. So do I think we're going to get to these possible ranges right now between $79 and $8,400? No, I don't think so. I think we're going to at least make our way up to $9,500 first, and then we will most likely try to get higher to possibly try to break around $9,750. And then after that, guys, we will most likely finish this correction into this beautiful wedge that we see. And once this wedge is seen and is met, and the criteria of wedging and squeezing are all met as well, and once all these indicators start not giving us mixed signals, but very concise and confluent signals, then everybody is going to see the exact same thing as you and I. And once we see the exact same thing together, right? Right now, we have to think of the mixed signals. I see many bearish signals. I see many bullish signals, right? I'm, I'm generally at heart, I always pursue it from an unbiased perspective. You don't ever want to go in biased, right? But... Right now, unfortunately, I am pointing towards bearish because I see more signals that are bearish than bullish, right? But sometimes there are mixed signals and it's very hard to differentiate and discern the difference between the two. But once these indicators all line up and the stars align and we get all these bullish indicators, well, I really don't think that there's going to be a lot of disagreement in the community. So what I'm looking for is the BTC long, the BTC short, the volume right now, price action, key levels of support that must be established, and specifically breaking out of this wedge. And once we break out of this wedge, there's no doubt in my mind that we are going to have an incredibly bullish market, guys. Do you know how the futures work, right? There will be many long futures contracts as well. I think the first one closed at around $10,900, so people made a lot of money. So I don't know a lot about the futures, nor will I pretend to, but logically to me, it kind of makes sense. If, if some futures contracts were going long, that the market would want to be, you know, as low as possible before going up, right? And, um, and not only that, like it would benefit the, the people the most before a big uptrend to get as many Bitcoin as you can for as cheap as you can, put it that way. So bears, naturally at heart, want really cheap coins while short in the market. I'm a bear at heart. I want really cheap coins, guys. I will be looking at SIA, TRX, XVG that I honestly wasn't going to share with the public, but I figured I got nothing to hide. I want to be completely transparent with you guys and let you know that we're here to improve the community. But the most important thing to me is just having a clear philosophy, having a clear mental state towards the direction of Bitcoin, right? We can't just think of it from what is happening right now. So despite you guys seeing me 
look at it from the perspective of a day trader, I hope you can also acknowledge the fact that I'm thinking incredibly long term as well about the entire market and what is going on with it. And that's important, guys, that you have to make sure we consider various factors. Now, I'm not saying that I've thought of everything, far from it. I wish I knew even more. Like, I wish, sorry, that came off kind of bad, but I wish I knew more about Bitcoin in general and about economics and about business and about finances, but I don't, guys. I'm just some engineer and mathematician who's good in crunching numbers and seeing patterns, right? That's what I specialize in. I'm not good at the fundamental side, but all that I believe in fundamentally is that Bitcoin's here to stay, I'm sorry to say. So I'm not giving you guys financial advice right now, okay? But I will tell you what some of my friend's situations are in, okay? I'm not going to say her name, right? I'm not going to say her name. Uh, she's my friend from, uh, we'll just say Singapore. <laughs> oh, you know who you are already. You know who you are already. I'm just calling you all right now, my Singaporean friend. Uh, she's got uh, three beautiful Pomeranians. You know, I've also got a Pomeranian friend as well right now. Um, I'm, and I'm not saying that um, this is just one friend. I've got a few friends in Montreal, some some in Vancouver. They are all in the same boat right now. And the boat that they are in is this, okay? They didn't stick to their guns, stop loss wise. Maybe maybe they just didn't have enough time. You know, they didn't have a stop loss out or up or whatever. They missed their opportunity to cut their losses at a reasonable level. So now they're in this situation where they, they're debating on excuse me, I've got a little bit of a hiccup there. They're debating their situation of whether they should buy and start laddering and even accumulate more because it's near the bottom, right? So you have to debate between taking this big loss where you've missed your chance to cut your stop loss or you have to wait very patiently and start accumulating even more. Of course, you risk even more exposure, right? You have way more exposure and exposure in the market is is simply not good sometimes being overexposed in the market not being able to calculate your position size as well which we will go over in high detail i've got many formulas um, that you guys need to go over you know we were going to go over so many position size calculations win trade expectancy calculations as well and we'll go over the finer points of money management that makes traders successful so we have to consider like do we sell what we have right now or do we just stay patient because we are in this for the 2019 year for the second quarter for the third quarter for the fourth quarter we are in this for all the wild predictions that people thought would never hit let me ask you guys this okay this is i sold my ethereum around you know like march or not march on may june like around there july ish right if someone said to you guys last year all right let's go to this right now and i want to put this into perspective for you because everything is relative all right now in 2016 17 rather right here in in like you know march when it was around actually earlier right when the ethereum days were bitcoin was around between 1500 or so under there if someone said to you that 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 in seven months guys like we're talking about from april june ish right april may june that guys bitcoins right now is 17 or 1500 dollars you guys know that bitcoin is going to go up to 30 20 thousand dollars right what would you honestly think if someone had said that to you back then imagine yourself having this conversation eight months ago okay where you're having a conversation with a friend about the possible prices that it could be every large number would just be thrown out of a, would just pulled out of a hat. Wouldn't, wouldn't you agree? Pulled out of a hat completely. There's nobody who would even say that Bitcoin will get to 10K, Bitcoin will get to 15K, Bitcoin will get to 19K and be certain about it because there was absolutely no history to base it on and there's no way, no way that anybody could have even extrapolated it with concise data. I really doubt that any of the best analysts in the world could have actually projected this. This is a pure hype. Uh, market-driven stage right now, cycle, right? Pure hype, guys. This is all FOMO. Emotions really does drive market, and it can drive markets to extreme. So think about it when I say this. Can you actually believe, if you were, if you can go back in time and you didn't know this, that when Bitcoin in April, May, when it was twelve to fifteen hundred dollars, if someone said to you, if I said to you that Bitcoin is going to reach ten k, Bitcoin's going to reach fifteen k or twenty k, you guys would have just shaken your head and been like, what? What is this guy talking about? There's no possible way it's going to hit that high of a high. Well, would you guys believe me? 
if I said that 30k is a possibility right now, so put into put into perspective, right? Everything is relative. So despite us right now being in a very panicked zone and the whole market is panicking and everybody is, you know, bearish right now, all of a sudden Twitter is just having a field day. We got to ask ourselves of the long-term potential and compare it to all the other times where we all thought Bitcoin was going to fail. I feel that Bitcoin is a shark. Like it's not, it's not a whale guys. It's just a shark. Like, you know, like I know that whales are sharks as well, but this thing is, is a predator. Like this thing is, this thing has got teeth. It's dangerous. This Bitcoin, you know, it's got a mind of its own. It's unpredictable right now. It's so volatile right now. It, it's, it's violent. That's what the market is. But the most, the coolest thing about Bitcoin is that it's unpredictable, right? It's unpredictable, but it's very bullish at the same time, and it cannot be controlled. There's so much strength in the market in the weekly chart right now, right? On the weekly chart, for example, the 100, okay? We're so above the 100 moving average right now, guys. Historically, we've never trended in a long time below the, 50, the 21 moving average, but take a look at the 50 moving average, we'll just say, okay? That's crazy. Don't you guys think that's ridiculous? Look at this right here, that we are so bullish on a 55 moving average still long term. These moving averages act as a really good support and resistance, right? So yeah, long term guys, like we're in it for the long haul. So like I always say, folks and gentlemen, is that we need to make sure we maintain our composure. We make sure that we are psychologically strong enough to go through this, okay? You need to ask yourself before every trade and before every market cycle, are you guys emotionally strong enough to handle these swings up and down? Can you hold yourself accountable for the decisions that you make as a trader, okay? Do you understand that if you do lose a trade, regardless of who you are following and what decision you make, that is ultimately your decision and it's your failure if it, it was made? Are you following a third-party site blindly? Are you formulating these opinions yourselves? There's so many questions that we need to ask ourselves during these market cycles and these phases that we go through. So I want you guys to know that I stand very bullish long-term, bullish to very bullish long-term, short-term guys, I'm still bearish, right? I'm still very bearish, uh, not very, I would say I'm very bearish on it, okay? I do believe we will attempt soon to uh, go to get to about nine thousand five hundred dollars. So please remember that if we break it with conviction, of course we'll test ninety-seven fifty range, and then eventually I still stand by my scenario. Okay, I still stand by my scenario. Oh, first of all, I also want to say, sure, it's possible for us to get to even ten k again, but I still stand by my bearish scenario that we will trend into this green box of mine, and guys. As a trader, I don't, you know, I don't pride myself on, on wanting to be right. But of course, as a trader, we, we measure our success based on our accuracy. And you guys have to admit that my accuracy has been almost unparalleled lately, right? With, with Bitcoin and a lot of calls lately, despite me missing some targets within 5 to 10, maybe 5 to 8% or something like that. Um, I've definitely demonstrated consistency. And I want you guys to know that this, this is not me... Um, talking myself up or anything, okay, take, I, that came off completely wrong, you guys should know by now I'm not like that at all, but what I'm getting to is that our consistency can come from trying to look at things from different angles, and that's how I challenge myself in the crypto universe, folks, I try to challenge myself by seeing how many ideas I can come up with from every single angle, and whatever makes sense and whatever sticks, awesome. Think of it as throwing spaghetti on the wall and seeing what sticks. So I highly recommend that you guys also exercise trying to think critically outside the box as well. And I, I believe that I have to be, I'm very grateful to have studied mathematics, right? And, and, and to have an engineering degree because guys, because simply that engineering and mathematics, it has helped me learn how to critically think. So yeah, like I love looking at these charts because it just lets me look at it from a very different perspective. And based on my accuracy and my background, like I really hope that I'm right, guys, and I don't want to be wrong, you know? Like I don't want you guys to lose money. So whenever I make these technical analysis, it's a, it's a lot of pressure, believe it or not, okay? It's a lot of pressure because a lot of people are watching these videos and they have become de 
not dependent on it, but it has become a very relevant piece of information uh, to add to their uh, to add to their you know opinion and to add to the consensus in the market as well, right? So so I hope that based on my track record that um that this is taken seriously everything that I say, okay? Because I'm not just here to give you guys random advice. I actually genuinely want you guys to improve and expand your cryptocurrency game in particular. So I'm, I'm only going to do this one Bitcoin update today. I thought it was very important for us to cover all of these things that I'm talking about. I don't want to overwhelm you guys with a lot more information because you guys know how passionate I, passionate I can get about cryptocurrency. I can literally talk about cryptocurrency for 24 hours a day, 9 days a week. That is right. So I'm going to leave you guys with my thoughts here that my correction target still stands between 7,900 and 8,400. But right now, I believe we will test between 95 and 10,000 again. Long term, I'm very bullish to bullish with a 30K scenario. And, and um, yeah, 30K scenario, right? And right now, for this specific moment, I'm bearish biased. All right, guys? So I hope this video has helped you in some way. I apologize if I got a little bit weird in these videos, right? I try to, um, I preach a lot, right? I, my dad does it as well, guys. He, he gets into these little soliloquies and, you know, these, uh, these, um, these speeches, right? These motivational speeches where he, um, like my dad really inspires me, put it that way. And I hopefully I've inspired some of you guys to make the right choices as well. And the one thing that I always exercise mo more than anything, guys, what is it? It's the big C word. It's caution, okay? Please exercise caution. If you are a new trader, sit on the sidelines, guys, please. I'm telling you this as a friend as well. Sit on the sidelines. You're going to get devoured by traders and by investors at this level right now. The best traders in the world lose money during these times, okay, guys? That's why myself... I have sat on the sidelines a lot. I've been patiently timing my entry so precisely that it's probably a ratio of 10 hours of studying to like 10 minutes of trading, literally. It's it's that kind of ratio to me right now where I'm putting in this much time doing TA to plan my entries and my exits than actually trading. So during these times, guys, step back. Don't chase profits. If you chase profits, you forget about what's really important. And what's actually really important is not money. It's playing for the experience. You play small to get your feet wet. We got to take these little baby steps first in order for us to learn and grow as traders. But if you guys are thinking that there's massive opportunity to make money right now in the market because things are very cheap, right? And you're an inexperienced trader and you're not chasing the learning phase of a bearish market you're, and you go for that profit, right? Whew, are you guys going to learn your lessons so fast when the market just beats you down and there's nothing you can do about it? So please, guys, just take my general advice philosophically that, um, that the best trade sometimes, the best thing to do sometimes is inaction. The best action is inaction sometimes. And you guys got to maybe play smaller because I have heard a lot of my friends even, okay? My, like some of my friends who are newer, they said to me, I got liquidated. And I know so many people on Twitter and on YouTube and on Steam and on Reddit as well, right? And, and on Bitcoin talk community where they've said, I've been liquidated because of this bearish market, okay? I want to let you guys know that I've been incredibly profitable during this bearish market because it is what I specialize in. But it took me a very long time to get here. And I just don't want to see people repeat the same mistakes that I've repeated because, you know, I went from broke to rich, broke to rich, broke to rich. You know, it was it was kind of that cycle when I started off there. And um, I don't want to see you guys repeat this kind of volatile pattern in, in your profits, and your losses. OK, so I hope that I've added some insight to what you guys already believe and to your opinion. If you guys like these videos, go to steam it guys everybody go to steam it right now and upvote my video okay guys i would so appreciate that doesn't cost you guys anything at all and i do want to contribute to the community in this manner always and guys i'm not going anywhere i've got your backs so without further ado guys make sure you also like subscribe and share all my videos and content as well if you guys absolutely love these videos consider buying me just a coffee 
just a coffee or a beer and donate to the Luna Cryptocurrency Pinky Bang. Other than that, traders and investors, I hope you've enjoyed this video as much as I've enjoyed making it for you. And have yourselves a fantastic day. And most importantly, please stay cautious, guys. If you guys are going to make a really dumb decision, can you please tweet me first, okay? Like, if you're, like, having a massive panic attack because you're in this horrible situation, okay? I really mean that. If you guys are in the worst situation that you could be in, please, 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 please reach out to me on Twitter, on YouTube. And you guys know that I respond to a lot of comments, okay? Because I don't want you guys to go through any of this and maybe we can talk some sense into a lot of things all right have a great day guys bye now and sorry for the long video